Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Hope you are doing good. So today I'm going to be talking about 10 hilarious manvas. But before we begin with the video, make sure to subscribe and like the video. Now let's begin our list. Coming at number one, we have four ways to find a wife. Kim Gun Hyu has left being known as the illegitimate son of a womanizer. But once his lover leaves him, he finds his pride and self-esteem crumbling into pieces. Goon Hyu decides to find someone to become his contractual wife and unexpectedly finds tens of thousands of people submitting resumes. He decides to take advantage of this absurd chance and on the day of the first interview, he meets Kang Jun Won. This story is about a man who has a phobia of marriage and suddenly fell into a contractual relationship with a strange woman. The female lead is wonderful and so funny and doesn't really let the male lead boss her around. Aside from the comedic aspect, the plot is an interesting twist of the contractual marriage trope. The art is really really gorgeous. Overall, their chemistry is funny and kinda cute. Coming at number 2, we have Rewriting the Villainess. Commander Lisa Mary of the Imperial Knights returns victorious to the Empire of Peton after a long war to subjugate an enemy kingdom. But little did she know that her beloved fiancé, Ailan, would leave her for Flora, the princess of the fallen enemy kingdom. After drinking herself into a heartbroken stupor that night, Lisa awakens to the modern world in the body of a high schooler and a webtoon writer, Doyun, in the modern world. Puzzled and confused, Lisa seeks to find out what happened and return to her own world, aided by Doyun's friends Ayan and Laura, who looks suspiciously like Ailan and Flora. The female lead is hilarious with dealing with the modern world. The art style and the story complement each other quite well, paired together. It ups the story's anti-believability. I love the exaggerated facial expressions. Coming at number 3, we have Lethal Romance. Yubi leads the action-packed life of a legendary martial artist on the hunt for her father's killer. Shin Wu is the aloof teen heartthrob with a heart of gold who is searching for his leading love. As heroes of their own respective genres, their destinies are seemingly set in stone. But when their worlds collide in a Miraculous twist of fate, the two team up to stray from the paths originally laid out for them. Now, they will have to mix tropes of both the action and romance genres to battle assassins, terminal illnesses and unnecessary love triangles. This manhwa is a parody of cliches taken from both shonen and martial arts and romance story. It has a unique catch on the perspective of Manwa and its tropes. The comedy is splendid. A very light, unexpectedly funny and a refreshing story about two vastly different characters. Coming at number 4, we have today's Shao Joke Manwa. It's basically a take on the stereotypical Shao Jo manga where a common girl gets accepted into a prestigious school and three elite good-looking guys fall for her. Female lead is super silly and she has got her priorities right. She is not focused on love but money. This manhwa presents cliches and subverts them at the same time. Just like the title, Shao Joke, every scene on Shao Jo manga is made into a joke. Female lead is hilarious and likable. I can't guarantee that the plot even makes sense, but it's absolutely hilarious. I love the exaggerated expressions of the female lead. Coming at number 5, we have My Cute Beast. As the saying goes, never judge a book by its cover, Daim is a lovely elementary school teacher as well as a savage who can rip anyone apart with the fiercest comebacks. The male lead, Own Gyu, is a florist with a heart of gold who often gets misunderstood because of his intimidating looks. But as 
incompatible as they seem, their shared love of cats starts pulling the unlikely pair closer together. This manwa is wholesome, fluffy, with a beautiful art style, unique storyline and interesting characters. The main leads aren't the typical female and male lead and that makes it so good. We have a strong female lead and the male lead is a softie and is fun to watch. As for romance development pacing, I think it's well paced. It's just full of memes and overly cute scenes. The male lead is just way too cute and precious. Coming at number 6, we have I Stan the Prince. Angela is mortified when her cringy fanfic about the dethroned Prince Rayburn is published behind her back and becomes a widely popular bestseller. Not only is it super embarrassing, but the book gets her in trouble with the current imperial family, who now want her head for treason. Luckily, Rayburn's sister Hoya offers to protect her, but in exchange, she must write a sequel that will improve Rayburn's tarnished reputation. But that's easier said than done. When the scary prince already hates her for writing the first novel, it's really funny and I think it has the right balance of romance, action, comedy, politics and drama. I laughed so hard through the unique comical relief that the author provides throughout the story. I love how the author and artist cleverly inserted modern jokes into the story. The art is really good. In terms of pacing, I think it's a semi-slow burn. Very relatable Otome Isekai since modern culture are infused into the story cleverly. Coming at number 7, we have Revenge Wedding. Marcidia Sasha has it all, looks wealth status. No man is good enough for her and she makes sure everyone knows the fact. Her single life is peaceful and perfect until one day she wakes up wearing a hideous wedding dress aboard a ship in the middle of the ocean. To her horror, someone has devised an elaborate kidnapping to wade her off to Admiral Dimitri Siprosa, the Empire's greatest war hero, or a massive jerk as others call him behind his back. What's worse, they are headed to a deserted island for their honeymoon. Both of them are believably hilariously flawed and their interactions are spectacular. This is one of those couples that really do make each other better people. I love their dynamic as a couple. The female lead is smart, a bit arrogant in the beginning and funny. This manwa carries you along and provides disbelief, annoyance, laughter, tender moments and much entertainment. Coming at number 8, we have side characters deserve love too. Gyumja Kim is the biggest and only fan of Kyle Du Viljeon, a side character in the fantasy novel Kingmaker. Her never-ending search for Kyle content is forever changed when she dies while reading the book and somehow awakens in Kyle's bedroom to a new life within the novel's pages. She is then shocked to learn that Kyle can also hear her thoughts, luckily only if she thinks of his name. Still, there is no time for this fangirl to daydream because Kyle is doomed to die. She tries hard to save the apple of her eye. Female lead is extremely shameless but likeable. Male lead is so cute when he keeps on blushing on hearing female lead's perverted thoughts. The female lead is basically a top tier fangirl. The art is beautiful, full on simp manga with deep traumatizing second hand embarrassment passed on to the reader. Coming at number 9, we have Live or Not. The key component in this story is that with a wishing well, both the main leads become young once more, consequently giving them an opportunity to relieve their youth and perhaps make different decisions. Chastity is more eager to start a new and make a life for herself, but her husband who is more than committed to their relationship is not ready to let her go. Both of them want different things out of the relationship, yet they manage to grow together in this quest. The manhwa explored so many real aspects of a relationship such as trust, intimacy, resentment, commitment and so on. The antagonist of the story also played an important role and tested their relationship 
टाइम एंड टाइम एंड अगेन कैरेक्टर डिजाइन वॉज ग्रेट देर इज डेफिनेटली अ लॉट ऑफ कैरेक्टर ग्रोथ इन दिस स्टोरी अलॉन्ग विथ शोइंग अ लॉट ऑफ वलनरेबिलिटी ऑन बोथ एंड द प्लॉट इज इमोशनल फॉर मेनी रीजन्स बट द कैरेक्टर ग्रोथ एंड रॉ स्टोरी लाइन मेक फॉर अ ग्रेट रीड दिस स्टोरी इज सो गुड ऑल दो दे हैव सो मेनी मिस अंडरस्टैंडिंग्स बट स्टिल दिस स्टोरी हैज अ लॉट ऑफ लेसन्स एंड स्पेशली अ हैप्पी एंडिंग दिस इज अ मस्ट रीड Coming at number 10 we have who is Mr President Shiara is a scholarship student starting her first year at Chrysopras High School an elite private school for the rich and famous a commoner compared to her peers Shiara's first day is full of surprises but the real shock comes when she ends up being chosen as the only public member of a private group dedicated to serving justice for the student body The female lead is smart and straightforward, intelligent and funny. In my opinion, it's underrated and deserves more appreciation. This web comic is just wholesome. The plot and the characters seem pretty interesting as of now. The main character is amazing, smart, has a wholesome personality and the people around her are the same. I feel like the author puts lots of time into every character. Hope you guys have a good day. See ya.